Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I want to go over some harp synthesis. I want to do this in two parts, and the first part I'll show you how to make like a really basic harp, and the second part I'll show you how to make some variations or simulate some different types of uh, harps or make it sound more realistic, etc. Let's get started. So I'm just going to start off here. I had it uh, the attack, you know, instead of here, I put it all the way at zero, make sure the sustain is at 100%, so it should look like this. We also might want to turn our release up. I like to put it around like 500, but of course you can set this to taste. Now let's get started here. Uh, another thing you might want to do is turn the gain down. Sometimes anything you do with like kind of physical modeling sometimes just gets really loud. So I prefer to turn that down and make sure you have that limiter on. Let's get into the generator. I'll go through this rather quickly. I know I've gone over this in previous videos. So I'm going to just use the drum synthesizer 4 in in, and this is going to simulate our pluck sound. I have a preset here. If we look in the editor, I'll pop this out for you. We're just having a sine sweep go down from 10k all the way to the bottom using a sine wave. Uh, I'm going to take the envelope and just move this all the way up. I don't want it to decrease in volume. And of course, let's move this down because like I said, it gets really loud. Now I'll let you hear it. There's nothing on the band pass either. You can hear it. It just sounds like a, a snapping sound or a popping sound. That's all we want. We don't need any, anything else. The next thing we need is the resonator, and this is going to be our string sound here. Now make sure it doesn't clip here, but let's play it. Okay, it sounds okay, but you're like, that's nothing like a string sound. It sounds like somebody like flicking a rubber band or something. And that's because there's not enough feedback. So we're going to move this up. There we go. I find around like 99% is where you get that string sound, but of course, uh, set that to taste. If you set it lower than that, you're going to get like almost like a muted string. And if you set it higher than that, like 100%, it might just go on forever, which we don't want. There we go. For the most part, that's good. Now, this is like a really basic harp sound. You can hear like, oh, that sounds like a harp, but it's not exactly right. It still sounds really plasticky. So let's kind of get rid of that. Uh, let's go to the globals. And first, I'm going to just take the velocity and set it to 100%. That way, whatever I hit is going to have the exact same velocity. It's also clipping. Let's turn this down again. Actually, let's go into here. I'll turn this one down. Okay. Now let's do some things. What I want to do is I want to get rid of some of the high end and low end. And there's lots of different ways we can do this. And before I would have to use like a bandpass filter. But if you didn't know now in the generator section, there is actually an equalizer. We'll add in the equalizer here. And let's click here. Uh, let me move this over and pop this out. So we have this band. I'm going to right click it and we're going to use a high pass filter. I'm going to use 12 decibels per octave. But of course, if you want to use 24 or something like that. And sometimes with other audio, audio material, like, ah, I don't want to use these, you know, higher, uh, you know, level uh, you know, decibel per octaves or higher order filters because, you know, it changes the phase. But in this case, it's just a sine sweep going down and it's going into the resonator. So it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. So use whichever one you feel is good. I'll let you hear what happens as I move this up. Basically what this is going to do, it's going to simulate different types of like picks. So if I was playing with a pick or playing with fingers, etc., uh, this will simulate it. So if you play, like I'm playing kind of uh, in the middle range, but if I play lower here. You can hear that. And sometimes it just sounds too low, like, whoa, there's way too much bass. A real harp would never have that much bass. So. Set this how you like. I think around 100 is good. And we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to set this to a low pass filter and do the exact same thing. So our sine sweep started at 10k, so anything above here is not even going to do anything. But let's start moving it down. I think that's pretty good. Now, of course, you can do more with that. 
And one of the reasons I'm using the EQ is because you can actually move some of the other bands, which are good, and you can come up with kind of uh, custom uh, pluck, uh, I guess, harmonics or frequency shapes. And I think this is really good because you can make your harps or anything sound a little bit different and emphasize or de-emphasize whichever frequency you want. Uh, next thing I want to do is let's add, let's see here, I'll add a filter here. And what I'm going to do with the filter is I'm going to change the pluck position. This will change the pluck position and also the bridge. Let me close that. Okay, so we have this here and we have the frequency at zero. Let's use a comb filter. Oh, let's hear it just off. Let's add in comb filter one. The comb filter will emphasize or de-emphasize different frequencies. And I think comb filter five sounds good for this, but use whichever one you want. So I'll go through them briefly. That sounds more like the harp I want. I'll let you hear this is with it on, off. Of course, play with that yourself and see if you can find something that you like, but I think comb filter five is fine. I also sometimes when I'm doing this, I like to rename these just so it's easier for me to understand later. So let's call this pluck position. This will simulate our pluck position and also uh, kind of the bridge material. And you're thinking, okay, well, that's the pluck position, but how do I actually change it? So you change it by using the frequency here. So you can hear that actually changing as if I'm plucking on a different uh, position on the string. Now, this is good by itself. But let's say I turn on like the ARP, let's say I play the same note at the same velocity over and over again like this. That sounds really robotic, and I don't think a real harp player could even play that perfectly every time. Now, of course, we could uh, vary, vary, add some variation to other things, but what I want to do is actually add it here. So let's take note random here, and let's add this. And I think between like zero octaves and four octaves is, are good. So let me try like this. Now, each time I hit it, it will have a different sound, uh, a different pluck position, I should say. Let's do it with the ARP. This is with it off. On. And if you think, uh, you know, that's way too much, just turn it down like this. Maybe it's here. Feel free to set that however you like. And also, if you're using like the MPE controller, instead of the random, you could use like the uh, timbre. Where is it? Timbre here. That way, wherever you're hitting on the actual MPE controller will matter, just like if you're playing a real harp. So that's kind of an interesting thing you can do also if you want to do that. And of course, you can adjust this manually if you find, you know, a place that you particularly like. We have this, but the problem we're having now is everything sounds like I'm just hitting the string as hard as I can. And I don't really want to do that. So the next thing I want to do is just add a filter basic. I believe this one uses the least amount of CPU, so that's why I'm using it. Uh, let's turn this down to around 30 or so. There we go. From here, what I want to do is just move this up and think what is the like softest hit I might have. So I think at zero, this is that's too soft. I don't think I get hit the harp, you know, that softly. Let's move it up. Maybe at 0.5, that's about right. So I think okay, 0.5 is our lowest frequency. What would be our highest frequency? So let's hit it and just move it up until it sounds like ah, that's too much. I think about four. So I'm going to set this to 
Let's go in here, and this time we're going to use velocity. And set the depth until it goes up to four octaves. Just move this up. One, two, three, almost there. You can also hold control on your keyboard if you're using Windows, and it'll go slower so we can get like right at four, or at least close to it. 3.99, that's good enough. So, here we go. That's our basic sound. Let's do perhaps one or two more things. Take uh, M or convolution or easy convolution one. I'm using this. You can use any reverb you want. Uh, let's take a hall. Let's take a small clear hall. Turn the wet dry down. Turn the high pass up just a little bit. Turn up the pre delay. Here we go. Let's hear how this sounds. Now for me, this is really sounding like a harp. There's more things I can do, and in the next video, I'll show you how you can do more. But I think for now, this is pretty good. Uh, next video, I'll show you how you can change the sound. You can add a little bit more string buzz if you want. Uh, you can simulate the sound of, let's say, something like a, a Japanese koto. Or you can change some of the tunings to get some, uh, I guess, alternate tunings, etc. So. Please give me a thumbs up. If you have any extra comments or questions, leave those down below. Check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. And until next time, see you.